from San Mateo, California, it's theCUBE, covering SnapLogic Innovation Day 2018. Brought to you by SnapLogic. Hey, welcome back. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Crossroads 101 and 92. You've probably been there. You're probably stuck in traffic. Look up, you'll see the sign SnapLogic. That's where we are. We're talking digital transformation. You've probably heard us talk about digital transformation on theCUBE, but not that many people or excuse me, companies actually have an executive who's in charge of digital transformation. That's not the case here at SnapLogic. And we're really excited to have our next guest. She's Deletta Denaforio, and she's the head of digital transformation for SnapLogic. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So why does SnapLogic have a head of digital transformation? I've never heard that for a company, and you are not really running digital transformation inside the company. You're helping your customers' digital transformation journey. Yeah, absolutely because uh, integration is at the core of uh, many transformation that we see uh, led by our clients. And um, it's not about implementing a software for the most part, it's always uh, you know, the people, process, and technology. Right, right. So what we are trying to do is uh, to insert ourselves in the strategic discussion so that uh, the implementation is uh, more uh, solid and uh, uh, stickier, right, right. and uh, so that's the intent of our practice. Right, and as you said, people process technology, we hear it all the time, um, and, and we hear a lot too, best practices in digital transformation is you have to make a commitment to that process change, you have to make a commitment to the people change, that's actually the hardest part. Yeah. I think integration usually, nobody really wants to talk about integration up front, because that's that hard little piece that we have to worry about down the road, but let's just not pretend. Uh, that we have to do that. But as you said, that's a really important piece. It's tying all these systems together. So you've been helping people with digital transformation here and in, and in some of your prior jobs. So when, when you sit down with someone who's never heard that term, what do you tell them? What is digital transformation? So typically we're pretty fortunate because um, I think especially in iTech here in the Valley, there are many clients that have a, a role which is equivalent to mine and is focused internally on digital transformation. So they are the head of digital transformation, the chief digital officer, and uh, what we typically do with them is uh, to try to figure out what their plans are mm -hmm. and, uh, and participate to uh, their journey um, by obviously helping um, from an integration perspective, right. both on the application and data side. And where do they usually report up? It's always an interesting conversation because we go to chief data officer events, we go to chief analytics officer events. So you've got kind of these new evolving roles that are really built around data and enabling data and becoming a data-driven enterprise, but does it report to the CIO? Does it report to the CTO? Does it report up through the CEO? And then now you've got this role of people kind of heading up the digital transformation. Where, where do you see them reporting through all, all and what's all kind all of the most effective? Maybe that's a better question. What's the more effective place for them to, to report through? It's, it's a little bit all over the map. There is not a standard. Uh, for example, a uh, couple of clients at, at Qualcomm, our equivalent uh, in digital transformation is head of application and he reports to the CIO. Okay. Um, so that's pretty traditional. Often the CIO is charter with digital transformation for obvious reason. He has the skill set, he has the team, he has the capability. But I have seen cases where he actually reports, he or she reports to the CEO, okay. um, which is even more interesting, I think, because then he put an emphasis on the importance of the program and importance of the target associated with this program. So another client of ours, Airborne in, in Texas, uh, is actually the CMO and head of sales who reports to the CEO and he's also in charge of digital transformation and we are helping him with some customers. It has the hat of also sales and marketing. Absolutely, three jobs. So, so that's pretty interesting, because that, which is good, because those are the things that are kind of leading edge, front edge to the, to the client, as opposed to digital transformation just on, on your back end processes. Um, system integrators, uh, in both those companies you just listed are big companies, the system integrators have been building transformation businesses for a long, long time. How do they fit, how do you work with them how, how does that you know, kind of all come together around the project? Yeah, so uh, Qualcomm, for example, you can see uh, pretty much any single system integrator that you can imagine of, and they all have a portion of the transformation. Right. None of them covers uh, the entire scope. Right. And, uh, and the interesting portion as well is that because they're all competitors, so that, you know, that often there is not a lot of collaboration, and uh, we are a little bit kind of agnostic, but obviously we have an interest in 
penetrating the account in terms of making use of our technology. Right. So is in our interest what I'm trying to do, obviously I, I come from the system integrator world, so I do speak their language and what we are trying to do is to work with them to make sure that um, we understand what the use cases, what the business cases, uh, and, uh, and we kind of work together across uh, different objectives to enable the client to hopefully to di be digitally transformed. Right, so it's such, it's such a big word, and, and the CEOs are talking to the boards about it, and the public yeah. companies are talking to the analysts on the, on the earnings call, we're going to digitally transform, um, and these are big organizations that are complex and have many, many pieces and parts. How do you get started? What are some best practices for people that you know, have a board edict or have a CEO edict, we need to digitally transform, I'm, I'm afraid of the competition, I don't even know who's coming. Where should people get started? How do they you know, slice and dice this thing so they're not trying to eat the whole elephant in one bite? Yeah, the, the only cases that I've seen success on are the one where hopefully the leader has done that before in some kind of shape or form. Uh, if he's a brand new chief a digital officer, there are more challenges. But the most important thing uh, is uh, kind of keep the momentum. Mm -hmm. And you tend to keep the momentum through some sort of quick win. So if, if the scope is too large and uh, the roadmap is too fix uh, over three or five years, given the speed of change in technology, it's very difficult to achieve those right. goals. So it's much better to have a more agile mentality and maybe plan a year, a year ahead uh, with uh, some very tangible, deliverable in the way and mobilize uh, everyone around it so right. that uh, the momentum is kept and it's not just a nice word that a company has because they need to talk about digital transformation. Right, and then what do you look at? You obviously have a, a, a specific point of view. You have your background and you've been a system integrator and a transformation leader, but in terms of coming from the SnapLogic point of view and integration and that opportunity, what do you look for uh, as opportunities for those early wins, either based on prior experience or just you just know there's some really inefficient, ugly things that you can make big difference on relatively easy. What do you look for as kind of those first those first wins in a digital transformation project? Yeah, ideally we, we love to be involved with everything to do with customer and you know sales and revenue because obviously those are the biggest pain point for a client for a client. Right. Um, but often you need to be flexible enough to understand what the priorities are and uh, Currently, I'm involved uh, in a m much more a traditional close activity accounting process. Um, and you will be thinking, okay, that's back office, but actually fixing that problem first will create a lot of credibility within the company. So I think a company like ours has to be very flexible, need to listen to the client mm -hmm. and be very flexible in terms of what priorities to start with first right. uh, to prove the technology and, and then progress uh, maybe for higher value right. uh, activities. So I would hope it's 2018 that people understand that they're not setting forth on a five-year SAP ERP implementation. I mean, are, are we hopefully past that? That yeah. this is not new information that you need to take small bites, small yeah. victories, and move quickly. Yeah. Are, are we there? Uh, Yes, but uh, still I've seen a, a lot of strategy document and business plan that are two, three years of horizon. And, uh, and, and I think the horizon is, is way too long. But also, you know, at the same time, it's a strategic function. So you ask to, to picture a vision, at least uh, directionally. Right, and, right. Uh, so I think the vision has to be generic enough to then flex with, with the project and the activities right. within on a two, three, three, three month, right. quarterly almost right. a cadence. It's, it's so funny that we continue to find these massive inefficiencies all over the place. You would think that most of it had been wrung out by now between the ERP implementations and all the all the business process re-engineering, I guess was the old process yes. before digital, digital transformation. So I just wonder if you can share some stories um, from the field about some of these relatively short duration projects and the yields that they are providing you know, on this path to a more comprehensive digital transformation. Yeah, so the, the first example that comes to mind, again, going, uh, going back to Qualcomm, um, when they talk about human capital management or engineering, uh, what is interesting there is that um, you take the entire hire to retire, and it's pretty overwhelming, right? From, from a moment you hire an employee to a moment uh, you obviously uh, retire that, that function or that role. 
And uh, what they did uh, quite interestingly uh, was uh, to come up with uh, a few application that will make uh, the life of the employees and their manager easier. Uh, so we are biting the process uh, by building application that, for example, enable to facilitate uh, the onboarding or um, application that uh, uh, help HR with analytics and inquiries uh, um, and gradually trying to automate that process, which today, even in a large company uh, like a, a Fortune 100 company, can be incredibly manual. Right, right. Um, and then another example that comes to mind to me is uh, if you look at the entire order to cash cycle of a company from the moment a client get in contact with a company through a website to the moment he actually purchased the product, again, there are many touch points and they're often, often disconnected. And uh, another client of ours, uh, Airborne, what we're doing with them is uh, to just take one small bite, which is uh, uh, figuring out from the time a client tried to configure a product on the website to the time they want to try the product, how the experience uh, can be more automated so that there is not a lot of interaction necessarily with customer services, which has a limited bandwidth, but there is, is much more self service. Right, right. And, uh, and then gradually tackle uh, the rest of the order to cash cycle. So both of those examples are really about automating manual processes yeah. as you just described them. So then what are the, what are the KPIs that you're using to measure success? Is it um, total time duration, number of steps, uh, calls back to a person, what are some of the metrics of success? Yeah, so you see on the customer side it's kind of easy because uh, you tend to very much require feedback from the customer. So if uh, the customer satisfaction in index goes up or revenue goes up or less return, so those KPI we're kind of more familiar with. Okay. But when you look at the HR world, the, the human capital management world, there are so many ramifications of being able to serve your employees better. Um, but much more intangible. Like for example, turnover. Uh, well, there is good turnover and bad turnover. So if you're serving your employees better with better app uh, by which they can still service some of their activities, uh, does it translate uh, in less turnover? Um, maybe yes, so maybe, maybe actually it does translate in more turnover because maybe the employees that stick around are the ones that are more technology savvy. Right. So um, the human capital management side is harder in terms of defining KPIs. Um, and is much more early stage than anything to do with customer. And then there is a, the other universe associated with digitalizing product, um, like for example, you know, all the world of IoT mm -hmm. uh, that we are involved with, uh, with a few clients, uh, and, and that is uh, very measurable and tangible because you're actually coming up with new product, and what we're doing is facilitating uh, the ability to access data, right. and um, which is a, a, a very tangible element uh, right. of the product development lifecycle. So of all the div uh, transformation projects that you're involved in, how, how would you break them down in rough numbers of, you know, kind of cost savings on an existing process, which is, you know, do automation, versus, you know, kind of forward-facing, customer-facing, let's just call it wrapped around a customer experience, so ultimately you're getting higher customer satisfaction scores and revenue, versus the third, which you just touched on, which is so, so important, which is converting from a, a product-based company or um, you know something that's more tangible into more of a services recurring revenue that's, that's probably built around that product. And the example that gets thrown on all the time is you know when GE starts selling miles of propulsion versus selling engines, it's a very different kind of relationship. So in, in the things that you work on, how would you kind of break up the, the percentages in those three buckets? Yeah, so um, what we see still a lot, and I would like to see less, is the first bucket, okay. which is uh, reducing costs, so I would say more than 50%. Okay. Um, which is around reduced cost, drive efficiencies, better reporting, uh, eliminating application, right? Because many cost, many clients have too many applications to perform some of these back office processes. Right, right. And they're very much associated with cost exercise. Right. And so over 50% for okay. sure. And that's logical because that's, that's obviously an easy place to start. You're not, you're not changing the company per se. Yeah. You're looking for efficiencies. All right, so uh, Delita, I'll give you the last word before we sign off. Is, is if you, you get called in to a new project, it's a, a, a CEO, they're, they're stressed out, they, they know they have to do this. Um, what do you tell them about transformation, digital transformation? How do you kind of help them break it down so it's not just this overwhelming giant, you know, goal on high 
uh, but actually something that they should get excited about, something they, should, they can have some success with, and something that ultimately is going to be a really good thing. I think there is no one recipe. It's about figuring out where the, where the company wants to go. What is the primary objective? Is it sales? Is it a new market? Uh, is it a new product? Uh, and then kind of break it down in a tangible chunk and uh, that kind of makes sense to them. But uh, you've got to go for the first priority item uh, that the CEO, I'm sure, will be able to articulate yes. very well. Yes, get that quick win. Yeah. Well, Deletta, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. and. Uh, Good luck on transforming everybody. Thank you. <laughs> All right. She's Deletta. I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE from SnapLogic headquarters in San Mateo, California. Thanks for watching.